Hello and welcome to yet a wonderful episode. Now, you might notice that I don't have a voice changer running. Well, maybe you think I do, but I don't. This is the way my voice sounds in this microphone. It's a little bit echoey in here because it is actually a very tiny room that I'm in. And there's no getting past that, quite frankly. Uh, not with this microphone, at least, anyway. I don't think that we will be with even a fancier microphone because it's just the acoustics in here and... Yes, I know I can put sponge and whatever on the wall, but, or even, what do people say, egg cartons. I'm not messing around and doing that in here. This is, I'm not planning on staying here long enough to make that this worthwhile, um, to be investing in all that sort of thing, just to make this room uh, sorted out so it stops aching. If I move at some point in the coming years, and then there, I'll think about doing it then. But what we have is the Amiga 1200 and no avatar. So in the bottom right now, you should be seeing my Amiga 1200 with its lid taken off, a strange yellow cable, which is connected to a gray strange cable. Now the, that's just eyed cable. I've got the extension cable so that if I decide I don't want to have the drive, the CD drive connected, I don't have to. But it means I don't have to keep popping the case on and off just to uh, sort that out. The big yellow cable goes to the back of this. Uh, it's actually a DVD burner. It's meant for uh, laptops, or those really small desktop computers that you might have in the workplace. Um, it's a slot drive. It's being put into an adapter so that it changes to five and a quarter inch. The and it's a five and a quarter inch caddy, which normally would be for USB, but I've, um, well, basically I've just got the eye cable running in the back of there, and then I've got the, um, the power going at the back, and at the back as well, this particular drive had um, a connection for 2.5 millimeter stereo. I've taken advantage of that. Sadly, it was damaged. I don't know how it was damaged, but it was damaged, so yesterday, I uh, had to mess around and uh, change the connector over. It's all working fine now, as far as I'm aware. Um, so inside the Amiga, I have the ID buffer adapter, so that I can have a CD uh, cable. I know it's DVD drive, but I'm just going to keep on a CD because that's what I've got. Sorry, CDs, and then I've got the MSATA to. Um, 44 pin hide and then I've also got the little adapter with a green light on it is an adapter so that I can use an external USB keyboard um, I've stuck in a Wi-Fi adapter so that I can um, not Wi-Fi adapter sorry a wireless keyboard adapter um, so that I can use a wireless keyboard and the reason I've got that is so when I've got all this set up to the TV in my front room it means that I don't have to sit on the floor like a teenager, uh, pressing keys and everything like that. Um, and then I've got a GoTech with some wires dangling off, which I have for a LCD screen. Um, but I've currently got not got it connected because I haven't got enough space right now to be having it um, just dangling there and not accidentally short it or something like that. I don't want to find my Amiga. Um, here I have a little adapter that changes the activity lights on the Amiga to being pretty much whatever colour you want. The O3 change to whichever, excuse me, whichever colour. Um, um, doing that you just uh, press down and then you press down another one and it means you can change the colour to whatever you want. I'm not going to change it at the moment, I've got it more set to red because I'm going to be getting a black case and red key caps eventually when they arrive sometime this year, hopefully. They seem to be getting a lot closer to actually coming out. Now, what I want to show you is bubber and sticks in WHD load, just to prove to you that the CD rip of it um, doesn't actually play music on the on this rip because that's just the way it is. 
I don't know why um, they're not being programmed up to con to say play external web files or to play um, instead of using ISOs using um, what is it uh, Q and bin files or using web files or MP3 files. I don't know enough about the coding or anything like that to explain any other. It's amazing that it works like this at all, but it does have its disadvantage of you don't get the CD audio um, because that's how the, the a lot of the games for CD32 had the uh, music for the games, so that it was a direct audio track, just the same as what you would get in a normal audio CD that you listen to your music to. In fact, it was possible to stick them into a normal audio player and listen to those individual tracks if you so wish you just had to skip past uh, the track that had the data on for the computer because of course that would just be weird for it to come through anyway so here we have go it's loading from the hard drive And there's no, no audio, no music at the very moment in this intro. I'm sure plenty of you have seen this before anyway. I'll just press the fire button just to prove to you that it is loading. And we go, it says at the top there, music and sound effects, but there's no music. I press start, call through. And you can hear the sound effects of the, the tree chasing after you. I think. And I have to press a different button to jump. So you can hear the sound effects. Anyway, so I press print screen if you tell me to. Let's go back out of the game and then through the magic of here's one I prepared earlier. I slide the disc in. Now I've been quite lucky that this particular drive is very, very quiet. I have tried to use um, full size five and a quarter drives before and it was it was like a jet engine was trying to take off. Well it was a huge starter motor for a huge flywheel or something. It was too noisy, so it had to be changed, and that's why I selected a uh, this drive in the hopes of it would be quiet because it was meant to be inside a laptop. It doesn't have to be super duper speeds because the CD32 couldn't handle super duper speeds anyway. So you can see it's come up with the icon Bubba. I'll just show you that it does actually have files there. So you go in the S folder in the startup sequence. So we don't need that though because what I need is to load it to the workbench CD32. I decided to throw this file in my workbench instead of the hard disk just because it's always going to be here anyway so I'm a lot less likely to accidentally delete it from here than I am from the main hard disk and there's plenty of room on my system drive because as you can see I've still got 10 gigabytes free anyway so why not anyway I'll load it this particular game needs to have settings done to it some do some don't it seems but this particular one seems to work best with vector base because um, I don't know what that actually means the vector base zero, but it seems when it actually goes into the game and you go to the bit where you first see Bubba and you're controlling him, it'll crash. Well, not crash, but it'll show a lot of scrambled pixels and things. But if I run it like this, it doesn't seem to do that. So that's what I have to try to remember. So I boot. Now while it's loading, the one thing I can do is have a disk in the drive um, and while the computer's booting up, I can press F10 and it will go straight into that little window that you just saw there. 
instead of loading the whole desktop. But the amazing thing is now, you can hear this nice music, and that alien was being sold off. Seems bubbling in trouble. Come all whizzing with the disc, and then becomes the menu. And there we go. So I press the fire button again. It still says music. There's nice music as well now. Go into the game. music and sound effects. I need to learn how to play a lot better, but I think it's great that there's music and stuff and all with basically quite easily setting things up the way. Well, it's not that easy actually, it's quite picky, you have to um, learn a fair bit to get, actually get it going. It's not just a matter of easy install, at least it wasn't for me. I've seen other Amiga users make uh, YouTube videos. And saying it's dead easy, but for me it wasn't. It might be because of the controller that I have, it might be because of the drive that I have, it might be because of the way that I've installed um, the workbench. But um, it took a little bit of figuring out, but if you can think somewhat logically, it uh, is quite easy to set up. You just um, have to tweak things a little bit and make sure that your startup sequence is done properly. Because um, basically what happens is it, it creates a startup sequence and it start, uh, creates another file that the startup sequence calls in. Um, and it's just making sure that that's all set up to the way that your particular way of having workbench installed is done. So I'll reset back to the main. There you go, I'm pressing control. Sometimes it doesn't seem to work straight away, this, I don't know why. There we go. I have noticed when there's a disc in, it does take a little bit longer to boot than normal. I don't know if you can hear the little whiz of the drive on the mic or not. If you can't, that kind of shows you on how quiet it is. Just please wait patiently while the Amiga reboots. Suppose it takes 12 seconds to boot, I'm not so sure about that. So, suppose it does. Now, to eject the disk, I have to take this icon, drag it down on top of this little eject icon, because as I said earlier on, I don't have an eject button or any button on the front of my drive. So, I have that staying permanently on there, yeah, and there you go, it just ejects. So, put that over. And just to show it isn't just 
bugger and sticks. Let's take it on as well. It's a disc. Wait for that to be picked up. It's Taylor Salt. It's good too. So I'll bring the shot again. See, that was in fours. Pretty game this up one. I don't really think there's much advantage having the two games like this, but I think that's what they did. Just to uh, means that it basically was just a direct copy of the two games onto one CD. Apart from that, I don't really think there's any much anything else new to the way this game plays. I don't know because I've not played it. Either way, I suppose that uh, maybe it's reprogrammed for the gamepad. They do say pad on the game. Let's jump past all this. Um, Nash is dead. You're on your own. Oh no, I'm not by myself. Marked card message followed. Oh, landmines. Yeah, some health could help. But the point is that game works as well. I'll not bore you by resetting. It well just to cut the audio to the media for now. So, I hope that was of some interest to some people. If you do want to uh, let me know what other computers you might like to see, I have a choice of an Atari ST E, I have a choice of an uh, Toshiba MSX, a, a Sanyo MSX, a uh, Itachi MSX2. With them, I've got a cartridge that uh, is called the Carnivore 2. I've not actually used that yet. So you can maybe learn that along with me. I've got an Amstrad CPC 6128 Plus. Now, with that, I've got a cartridge that allows me to play different games, um, like was on the GX4000. I have an adapter that uh, sticks in the back and lets me to load ROMs as well and um, floppy disks. Um, I've also got a new gadget called the Multiface 2. I've not had a chance to play with that yet. Um, and it's got a GoTech uh, built in. I have a BBC Master, uh, which I have some things to try to test out with that as well. I have a, um, what else do I have? Trying to look onto my shelves, what computers I've got. Some of these kind of forgotten. Um, actually, I think that's it. Oh no, of course, I've got the Commodore 64 Ultimate. That was the other computer. Um, and I could show that off as well. So whichever computer you would like to see, whichever one gets voted the most, um, or mention in the comments, I'll load that up next. If no one mentions anything, I'll just randomly select something. So until next time, thank you for watching. I hope you found this of some interest, as I said before. Please tell your friends and family. I'm wanting to put a lot, a lot more effort into this channel than I did last year. Um, thank you again for everyone who kicked me up the backside because I surely well needed it. So until next time, have fun and good gaming.